Let's get this thing done. Christmas is coming. All right, time to replace the clippy deal. And uh, let's, uh, let's get to it. So I put the gear on. I reversed the direction, the side that the wear is on because when I removed it, I went back and looked at the video. And when I removed it, the wear was on the side closest to the plate. So I reversed it. It's not going to make much difference on this one because this thing is hardly worn. But there is one gear in the gear train that does have some wear on it. And if I can do that kind of thing, that would be excellent. I may not be able to, and I'll make it work either way. But it's always better. You know, I, I imagine this thing isn't going to be restored every year. So this is probably its one shot to do that. It's always better to... Uh, use a new uh, wear surface if at all possible unless that wear surface is going to cause accelerated wear on the mating surface and that does happen sometimes you have to worry about those kinds of things and engines and stuff like that all the time once things wear in in like a fast moving mechanical device like an engine once they have a wear pattern if you do other than that wear pattern, if you deviate from it, you'll cause uh, dramatically increased wear. Okay, almost got it. Let me try and do it so you can see. So I got it started, so I don't have to worry about it flying now. Now I can get up on here. These are sturdier than these little Zurons, so when I'm doing something that requires a little bit more force, I use these, uh, these little tools here. Just checking. Yep. This is Klein. That's another good brand. This is a Klein tool. And you look real close, guys. You you folks that uh, are used to buying electronics and new junk at Walmart, you won't recognize this. But if you look really close, it says Klein Tools, made in USA. Um, I want to, I'm hoping that uh, with uh, the inauguration of our new president and some of his new ideas, that we'll start to see more of that. Because uh, I work in manufacturing, and I'm here to tell you that it's getting to be tough out there. And I want to see it turned around, because we still make the best products in the world. Nobody can beat us, bar none. And uh, not, the, not the Chinese, not the Koreans, not the Japanese, not even the brilliant Germans with the German engineering can do better than American-made stuff. All you have to do is look at some of the classic products that have been made in the world, and you'll see... Ameri American made stuff is the best there is. There we go. First gear is cleaned and lubricated and put back in place. All right, I'll set this lever aside and I'll go on to the next one. I don't know that uh, you're going to want to watch all the details of that. Actually, before I do that, the rest of that plate. Now is a good time to do this so I can empty the jar. So let me get that, uh, let me get this shaft out of here, and we'll take a look see if that that lacquer did any good. I haven't looked at this, so you're going to see it with me. Whatever comes out comes out. All right. Handle it carefully. It's made of brass, and uh, you don't want to mark brass up. It's harder than copper, but it can still be marked up. No time for a little sustenance here. Hmm. Mm -mm. It doesn't get any better than that. And so far, Brock's has not moved their candy making facilities overseas. So I'll be a fan until they do that. And when they start making them in Mexico or China or Venezuela or someplace like that, I'll quit buying them and I'll buy something else. All right. Let me clean this up first. Hmm. This requires the assistance of a flashlight. All right, it's cleaner in there. And you know why I couldn't get the ball out? Because it wasn't a ball. Let's see if you can see this in the jar. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Right there. But it dropped out when it sat in the lacquer, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So now all I have to do is make sure that spring is clean, drop a little bit of lubricant down in the shaft, and then very carefully drop this step back down into the spring. I like that better than a ball because I can take that with the screwdriver 
and guide that down down the hole and get it into this and get it into the spring. I believe I'll be able to do it that way. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it needs to be pretty darn good. And lacquer thinner is cheap too, all things considered, what it provides for me. So I don't worry about using too much lacquer thinner. I don't, you know, if I if I'm having to worry about every drop of lacquer thinner I use, I might as well quit this hobby and pick up collecting spoons. Um, some things you just have to kind of buck up and pay for, and your supplies are important. And I'm kind of weird that way in that I like to not only have the supplies I need today, but the supplies I need for the next two weeks so that I'm not always waiting on something. I, I cannot, cannot I, nothing I hate more than to wait for something to show up in the mail and I'm stuck on a project until that thing shows up. <clears throat> I ordered a new computer on Amazon on Thursday night and, uh, you know, I have to wait until Tuesday for it to arrive, and that's killing me. I can't stand that. I want it now. Um, uh, you know, typical impatient American, I suppose, but, you know, I paid for it now. I want it now. The reason I had to buy a new computer is I'm trying to learn to do video editing better. That requires a video editor, and the computer I was using was a little... I liked it because of its size. It was convenient. A little 11-inch... Um, notebook computer, but it has a dinky processor that just is not able to do what it needs to do to run the video editor. The video editor uh, I'm, I bought is PowerDirector 15 by Cyberlink, and so far it looks pretty good. It's a little bit quirky, you know. I mean, there's some things I would have maybe done differently, but but I'll tell you something. It it uh, really really caused my little 11 inch computer fits. It just to render a, a, a half hour video took it like three hours and that's just not that's not going to work so the new one I got has a really nice Intel Core i7 processor real brand, latest latest one they have and it has a decent video card lots of RAM a big hard drive and even a, a um, an auxiliary solid state drive as well and they're in the uh, the video card has like 8 gig of RAM on its own, so I, this thing should be able to handle it. I'm not looking for a gaming computer. I've never played a video game, but some of the things, you know, that it that it has, I guess, are similar to what gaming computers would have. Now, some video editors require a lot of RAM and, and, and a better video card, and some do not, and I'm not sure why. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really a computer person, so... You know, as long as it works for me when I turn it on, I don't really care about the details. Here's the thing, man. We all buy these computers these days. I'm, I'll just, I'm just chatting while I clean this. We all buy these computers these days. And it's like we're all expected to know how to, how to make them work, how to almost build them, and certainly how to troubleshoot them and when they quit work and how to fix them. But when I go to the store and I buy a crescent wrench... I take the crescent wrench home, I take it out of the package, and I use it. I don't have to know how to build the damn crescent wrench to, know, to be able to own it and use it. But with computers, I practically have to know how to build the damn thing before I can be an effective computer user. That's crap. And I blame that all on a bunch of lazy people who are developing these things, who, don't, who are not uh, willing to put in the effort or the time or the money or all of the above to make them robust enough so that a... Uh, uh, your standard average Joe like myself can use it without having to become a computer scientist. But you know, it's the way it is. So, you know, you can you can wish for a different world, and I do do that. But you also have to learn to work in the one you have. So I've had to learn how to set comp my computer up at least enough to know how to get it out of trouble when it gets in trouble. Which, by the way, is pretty regularly, especially with Windows 10. Um, and every time they do an update, they mess me up even more. But um, So I have to know how to do all that aside from operating it. Someday, someday I won't have to. You know, if the boys at Microsoft would just take a couple of years off and quit messing with things, maybe, maybe um, our computers could stabilize and we could all get good at the ones we have and not have to be chasing after the latest thing all the time and then learning how to fix the latest thing once we have it. Um, 
you know, they change things sometimes that make no sense. They change things that they're just changing, I think, to change them. I honestly don't see why they do some of the things they do. I mean, look at Windows 10. It's a complicated mess now. I loved Windows 7 just fine. But no, nope, I've got to learn 10 because, you know, they'll phase out Windows 7 at some point and won't be able to use it. Okay, we're going to get these little guys out of the glass jar now. Before I put them in, actually, what I ought to do, I think it would be smart for me to go ahead and just put a small amount of lubricant where that little shaft is going to be because that will hold it in place. It's just like doing them for a Philco. Don't need much. Alright, so like that. Let's uh, go fishing. I was never much of a fisherman. One time in my life I caught one fish. It was in Illinois and it was a little bullhead. And I looked down at his eyes and I felt so bad about the little bugger, about having to kill the little bugger, that I took the hook out as carefully as I could. Thankfully it didn't get embedded too too uh, bad. And I, and I said goodbye to him and let the little guy go. And I never fished again. Never have hunted. You call me wimp or whatever you like. Never have hunted, never have really fished other than that poor little bullhead. Um, just not my bag. Not opposed to it morally, but I love animals so much I just would, would have a hard time doing it myself. When I was in college, I used to volunteer for the Humane Society. And uh, so I got a lot of years looking after trying to keep animals from getting sick or dying rather than uh, hunting them to eat them. Just not my thing. Alright, so this little deal... It's a little shouldered pin, and oh, yeah, boy, it's tiny, I'll tell you. I got big fat fingers, too. Kind of see, it's a little shouldered deal. This is usually where the cussing begins, but I'm trying to keep it to myself here. So pardon my ugly mug getting in the picture. Let me get this down in there. Maybe I shouldn't have put that grease in there because now I can't see. Sometimes when you're just about ready to give up, everything goes right and it goes together. So I was about ready to give up and start rethinking stuff. When I took some lacquer thinner and I squirted it in there and cleaned out all that nice grease I'd put in there to hold it together, to hold it in when I was going to put it in. And then I used the magnetic screwdriver again and kind of got it real close. Got it right there and it just went in like you know, it, it went part way in and I pushed real hard and it popped in and it stayed in. So now, before my luck runs out, I'm going to grab these three little ball bearings. They've already been cleaned. I'm going to put a little dollop of grease in each one of these holes. That should be plenty. Remember, the, hole, the ball bearings are going to fill up two, two thirds of the hole, so i put some grease in there, and a lot of times I'll get to one of them and I'll kind of inject a little until I see it coming out the other, kind of like when, you, when you're when uh, you packing a wheel bearing. And then you put the balls in, kind of rest them in, rest the ball bearing in there. Now, uh, this is going to go, this is going to go in the shaft. Like this, All right? Like that, just like I thought. All right, and then these balls are going to fit up inside this barrel part right up here, the wider part of this this uh, stepped cylinder, and uh, that's going to be all it takes to hold that in there. But uh, meanwhile, I'm going to want this, whatever. There's some wear, you know, signs of rubbing in here, so you know that it's some metal to metal. So let's just for just for you know giggles let's put a little bit of grease on it if it's too much it'll clean off it's not in a place where it's going to be critical 
but I do want it to feel smooth so even if only a tiny bit stays in place that's perfect you know so use your fingertip if you don't like handling grease again you're in the wrong hobby go collect spoons same deal with this thing I want a little bit in there because if they fit tightly enough just the act of putting it in will push three quarters of the grease out so I like to have it both in the cylinder walls and on the shaft that's going in the cylinder so that it kind of will spread grease everywhere as it slides down just take that grease and wipe it in here all right just and then also in the wall in the little part of the the bigger part of the cylinder where the balls go just put a little grease there this is one of those times when it's okay to use more grease than it's actually going to need in the end because you don't know where it's going to need to go but it will find its way there if it needs to be there it's not like a record player a record player you want to put only barely enough to make it work because record players are so many that grease just collects dirt and dust and gets nasty and then the record player plane won't work but this is you know semi sealed when it's all together okay so remember it mounted with these two screws up against the plate and then you know the tuning knob was on this end the, the flatted end here and the gear was on the other side of the plate so this is the right way to go now I might wind up pushing that little mushroom head in a little bit against the spring if these balls will not uh, pop in. So I do feel a little bit of rubbing as I push this in, so I'm glad I lubricated it. It might free up as it turn, gets in there. Yep, there it was. It just came real free. Yeah, these balls are not going to want to go in without, without me uh, pushing on it. All right, let me pl play with this a little bit, and I'll tell you what I come up with. I got it in there. Here's what I had to do. You know, I got this up against where the balls were riding against this, the opening to this cylinder. And then I have these holes in my bench that are meant for put, placing pins. There's one under this tape here. I had to put tape there to keep from dropping things in there all the time. I set this down in a hole so the shaft could stick out and I was up against this flange. And then I put a, a, a towel, a soft towel over top of this, and I grabbed a little rubber mallet that I have, and I tapped it and tapped it. Well, actually, what I also, I forgot, I have a, a small drift that's flat on one on the end. Set that down in there and pushed against the head of that mushroom so that I could compress it, the spring a little bit and give the balls a little more room to, to uh, retract into the holes. And the thing is, you want to do that at the same time you're pushing down. Otherwise, the balls will fall out if you're not careful. So I put this in the hole up against the flange, hole in the bench top. Drop this down in there. I don't want to put it in there now because it's clean and I, there's some grease in there. Drop this down, push down on the mushroom. Got a rubber mallet, small one. A little like, uh, I think it's an 8-ounce rubber mallet. Tapped it gently and it push that mushroom down as I'm pushing down on this this brass uh, the brass shaft too so doing all of that at the same time when I tapped it it allowed space for those balls to withdraw into the holes a little bit and the thing popped in place and that was that and now it feels pretty smooth not as loose as I had hoped it would be but maybe it's meant to be that way because there's no other way for this to go together so maybe it's meant to be this way and I and it is loosening as the grease works in there so I got a feeling a um, a, a few dozen uses of this thing and it'll be just fine now I'm going to get to work on those gears so I'll put a little bit of grease uh, I'm going to do the number three gear first because remember it sits underneath the number four gear uh, and I know that because I wrote myself a note uh, I wrote myself a note to, to say that so I'm lubric I'm just going to put a little lubricant um, on the first shaft the number three um, pivot shaft for the gear just put a little dollop of uh, grease on there. If I put it on all of them all at once to try and get ready and do it all in one step, sure enough, something will happen and I'll either rub across the grease or I'll drop something and it'll contaminate it. Something will happen. So I'll do one at a time. So I'm going to go fishing again. Oh. Need a stronger magnet. I used to have one. 
and I can't find where it went. I think my son borrowed it in the sense that most sons and daughters borrow things. I mean, that's, that's another uh, word for I'll never see it again. So, all right, so I'm, this lacquer is wreaking havoc on my hands, so I'm going to do the wimpy thing now. And I am going to hold it with the pliers as I scrub away. All right. That's the number three gear. There are some little wear marks on the teeth there. So, um, no big deal. They're not terrible. Doesn't need a lot. And then I'm going to drop this gear down on the number three pivot. There we go. Okay, nice and smooth. Should be smooth for a long time. Here's the little clippy thing. Touch some of that grease off of there. Okay. Get it started. Put some pressure on it with these uh, stronger pliers. There we go. All right. Number three gear is in place. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other uh, the other three gears, and um, I'll show you what it looks like when they're all put together. By the way, I wanted to show you just how clear these things had gotten or how clean these had gotten. So here you go. Boy, this camera doesn't want to focus. Piece of garbage. So you see how nice they look now. And I showed you that picture of how bungy, how grungy they looked before. So they're nice and clean. The wear marks are not that bad. So there's not been a lot of wear on these, which is really fortunate. I was concerned about that. So um, I'm just going to set this aside now. I'm gonna, well, I'm actually going to mount that lever. I'll show you that, and then I'll set this aside and get to work on the, the uh, tuning condenser. So let's mount this on here. <clears throat> I forgot to mention earlier that this thing had been, and somebody had worked on this, and, it's, and when they put it back on, they, this has been off of here before. And when somebody put it back on, they neglected to reinstall the lock washers. I'm not quite sure what it is about people in lock washers, tinkerers in lock washers, because I find so many radios, and other things for that matter, um, outside of the radio world even, where there's supposed to be a little lock washer and the lock washers are, are missing. Now there's only one way those lock washers can be missing, and that's if someone removes whatever it is that's being held on by the, the, the hardware and then they leave the lock washer out when they put it back together. I mean, it's not like they can dissolve. Um, they, so that's how they're always, I see it all the time, they're missing. Well, what I meant to, what I neglected to tell you earlier was that this thing was actually, the screws were actually fairly loose and that's partly how it must have gotten out of adjustment. So, um, really lock washers are simple. They don't cost a fortune. And if you lose one, just have a little stash on hand so that uh, you know, so that you can you can you know simply replace it because they they're important. They're there for a reason. So these are the little I call them star washers. Okay, they're they uh, they're little serrated washers. Okay, so this has some minor adjustment as I show you here. I guess that doesn't feel too bad. It's starting to feel pretty good now. Yeah, it's loosening up. Great. Okay, so um, next, this little lever. Remember, this is the uh, this is the mechanism that engages and disengages the manual tuning. It sits on here like so, and then it pivots. Right? See how that is? It pivots on that. Okay, and it rides this this little uh, channeled pin rides on on this uh, 
this little groove, right, or I don't know what to call this little little section right here. So this thing straddles this part of the bracket and it rides on it. That that acts as a guide. All right, so um, I'm there's then there's a, another gear that fits over this guy, and that's what I'm doing right now is getting that gear prepared. Remember, that's the one with the little screws. Catch of the day, catch of the day. One small washer. Even clean up your washers if you're reusing them. Clean them up. Won't kill you. Doesn't take that much effort. Don't be lazy. If you want a lazy hobby, you want a hobby that you don't have to put a lot of energy into, and I suggest collecting spoons. People usually bring them to you from wherever it is they go to get them, and you don't have to do much except put them in a box. Okay? But with radios, you're going to have to use a little bit of energy. All right, let me get the soft toothbrush in here, get her in the tight spots. I like it clean. I can't stand to put it together dirty. That's just a sign of sloppiness, man. You put it together dirty after you've had it apart to this point, you're, you're sloppy, sloppy and lazy. And I've already told you what I think about lazy. That's just my opinion. You may have your own. And I welcome any arguments you might have. All right, let's uh, let's Q-tip the snot out of the the bore. Make sure we're clean in there. Okay, great. Look at that. Look at all that crap that came out of there. Okay. Then of course you rinse it all off. No point in cleaning it if you leave all the debris on there so you rinse it all off okay terrific oh no that was a dumb move see see I knew something wasn't right I kept looking at it you guys should have why didn't you tell me I forgot something you know you're watching this you got to participate jump in scream at me just go hey dummy dummy you forgot something dummy All right, so here we go. I get this right sooner or later. It was, as Buzz would put it, that was a boneheaded move. Let me show you something interesting. I was right all along. It is an adjustment that's preventing this from engaging. It wasn't engaging all the way, and that's why I was having so much trouble in the last uh, little segment of the video. There is an adjustment, but I missed the, where the adjustment actually was. I thought the adjustment occurred out here. It does not occur out here because this plate floats a little bit. It has to float a little bit for the mechanism to be free to work properly. Where the adjustment is, and I should have remembered my car days working with suspension systems, is right here. Let me show you how that is. If you look, now here is the center of the screw right here. Okay, now look, see if you can see what I'm getting at. The center of the nut is not in the center of the screw. The center of the screw head is not the same center as the center of the screw here. So the head is off center. What this is is called an eccentric screw. It's an eccentric screw, but what it is is it's an eccentric adjustment. Now watch what happens. When I turn this, you see how it gets farther away? Oops. You see how it gets farther away? That eccentric is a stop. And that eccentric adjusts how far this mechanism goes before it's forced to stop when it's engaging with this first gear for the condenser. Now that's really, that's really good because it's up in a place that I can get to once this is all assembled. Well, actually it might not be. It looks like it, I'll have to look at the pictures. This is actually down at the bottom. That, those are the feet. 
But it, it looks like they, on purpose, put it in a place that I can get to when I need to. But we'll see. But in the meantime, I'm going to set it the best I can now for complete engagement without binding of these two gears. And um, we'll see how that goes. Because I think that's why that motor was, that the whole thing was skipping and making that terrible noise back when I was first testing this. So I think I've stumbled on the answer right here to most of the tuning problems. So I'm going to go ahead and make that adjustment, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to shelve this for the time being and get to work on that tuning condenser. Just wanted to show you, I think this is, wow, this was really hidden from me. It's ingenious, but it was hidden from me. All right, guys, I'll get on with the condenser now.